Hi there, it's Sine Naylor bringing you another unscripted video that empowers you. Today we're going to take a look at FileZilla, an FTP client that allows you to copy files to and from your local computer. We're going to break this video down into several sections and look for the links at the last slide to let you go directly to the area where you need help. We are going to cover several areas as I mentioned. Uh, the first will be downloading and installing FileZilla. Next, we'll cover setting up a remote site uh, and saving that so that you can use it again and again and again. We'll transfer files, uploading them to the remote site. We'll also transfer files or download them to your local computer. This is a really good way to make a backup of files that you're currently using on your website. We'll also take a look at some advanced settings uh, that will let you do things like set up your startup directories and uh, your pass-through mode and, and uh, how many connections you want to use at one time. I'll also discuss some best practices for organization. Uh, if you're going to have more than one site, it's important that you stay organized from an early standpoint uh, so that uh, you, you don't lose what you're doing and, and things are easy to find. Finally, we're going to cover keeping FileZilla's installation current. Now, I know that uh, you understand software changes over time, Windows changes over time, there are security updates released, and FileZilla has a built-in capability to keep itself current. You just have to answer a couple of questions whenever it talks to you. So I think that's about going to cover it. Again, I'll leave uh, links on this slide to take you directly to the location within the video for each one of these sections. If you're new to FileZilla or FTP in general, I do recommend you start from the beginning of the video and watch straight through. Okay, if you're ready, come on, let's get started. Okay, to get started, open your favorite uh, browser. I prefer Firefox for web development, but Whatever you have, it works exactly the same way. Chrome, Opera, Safari, doesn't matter. Navigate to FileZilla-Project.org. You're going to select the Download FileZilla Client on the left-hand side. This will give you options for the additional platforms. If you need to make files available from your computer to others, you'll want the FileZilla server. 99.2% of you will only want the FileZilla Client. This is the one I recommend. Now, this is a recent addition to FileZilla, and although I support SourceForge and, and what they're doing, I am going to recommend that you show the additional download options, uh, predominantly because, it, as they state here, um, this installer may include bundled offers, and it's sometimes very difficult to tell what you're going to be getting. So I do recommend show additional, and then choose your... Uh, installation based on what operating system you have. Since I have Win64, I'm going to choose this. I'm going to wait for it to start loading. There it comes. I'm going to save this file to my computer. Now I have an area on my computer that I set up for machine tools and since I do install uh, FileZilla on every new computer, I'm going to place it right here. Once it finishes downloading, you can bring up the library list by pressing Control and J, or if you have some other method or you know where you uh, placed it, you can navigate to there now. It's a quick double tap to install it. Now I already have it installed, so it is going to ask me, click run, it is going to ask me if I want to make changes. So I'm going to agree to their terms, and it's going to ask me if I want to add or remove. This should say install for you. I want it for anyone who uses the computer. I do not want a desktop icon simply because I, I have it organized a little differently. Click Next, Next to accept it where it installs, and then it will extract. When you click Finish, it will start FileZilla. Now at this point, I, I recommend uh, pinning it to your desktop. If, if website maintenance, WordPress, HTML sites, if this is something you're doing quite a bit, it makes sense to have it on your start bar. If this is a one-time deal for you, you don't have to pin it to the start bar, that's just an option. Now, <laughs> a word of warning. I've been using FileZilla for quite some time. So I'm going to have a number of sites in here 
when you first come in, there won't be any. And I remember I mentioned uh, earlier in the introduction how I would recommend you stay organized. Set up some organization now and adhere to that going forward. This is the reason. As you can see, I've got a number of sites um, and they're divided into different categories so that I can find what I'm looking for really quickly. For example, I do a lot of work for clients. I have blog installations. I have clients that I coach. I have people that I do just do geeky stuff for, and then I have programming clients. So keeping them separate helps me find who it is I'm looking for instead of having one long, crazy long list. So I, I recommend you adhere to some form of organization to help yourself down the line. When you signed up for hosting or someone set you up with your credentials for your remote site, they provided you with FTP credentials that included a host name. Here we'll set up a new site. I'll name it Testing Site Setup and we'll need to provide it these pieces of information. And if you set up with GoDaddy uh, as a host, GoDaddy sent you this information uh, when you initially set it up. HostGator, um, Namecheap, they're, they're all pretty much the same. Um, you're going to need to open that email and find the host name, which typically, although not always, but typically is the name of the domain that you'll be connecting to. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to use one of my sites. Now, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you the password that I'm putting in. I'm simply going to type it in. So in my case, the name of the domain is finebiz.us. This is a future directory project that I have in mind that I haven't really begun yet. Now, FileZilla does recommend that you use explicit FTP over the TLS if it's available. Now, if you don't know what these mean, basically these are just uh, security protocols. It is possible to set it up using only plain FTP, which is not as secure as the other method, obviously. Uh, but for the purposes of our demonstration today, I am intending to use this. The login type will be normal, and then you'll place the username here. Now I happen to, I probably shouldn't show you that. And I'm not going to tell you the password. <laughs> so once you've done this, click connect and it will tell you that it's connecting to that remote site. Now as you can see on the left hand side we have my local computer. On the right hand side we have the remote site. If I click the plus sign, we'll see the folders that are available to me on that remote site. Now, this happens to have been set up as a WordPress site, uh, but regardless, pretty much, uh, pretty much every kind of site will be under public HTML if you're using HostGator as your web host. Now, each host is slightly different, but the majority of them use public HTML as the location or the folder where your files live at the remote site. Now I mentioned to you that I would show you how to transfer files up and transfer files down for the backup. So let's cover that now. So by using the tree on the right hand side, navigate to where you want the files to come from. In my case, I'm going to back up the theme directory that, I, that I'm using. Okay. So let's say this was a custom theme that I had just created and it's not again, I just installed this site, there's, there's really not much going on. Um, so let's say that this is the folder that I want to back up though. So I would navigate on the left on my local computer where I would like that to live. Once I'm there and you can see that you're there up here, I would navigate to where I want or the folder that I want right click and say download. That would take the files from the remote over to the local. Now conversely, if I had a, a theme, for example in this case Evolution, is the one that I've decided to use but I've not yet placed it onto the site. If I click the folder themes, and again I can see where I am right up here, and I right click on the remote side, I'm sorry, the local side, I can choose to upload these files. Now, once I begin, it will start telling me. Now, I, I've turned off my pane right down here. 
this is where the files are going to display what's happening with them. Now, we did kind of jump over something. I did mention to you earlier that I would um, I would cover the basic interface, and we just kind of slid right over that. I got I, I got excited about showing you uploads and downloads, and I skipped it. So let's take a moment to review that now. The FileZilla interface is divided into sections, and these sections are available to toggle on and off. The first four are the status window. This tells you what's happening, so you can turn that on or off. The local directory tree, on or off. The remote directory tree, on or off. And the, the queue status right down here. This basically shows you what files are queued up, what files failed, and what files successfully transferred. Now, I, we initially set up a website within our site manager to do this. It's not entirely necessary. If you know the host, you can type it right here and do what's called a quick connect. Click Quick Connect and it will connect you to that site and it'll do so quickly, but it won't save this information. When you leave and come back, this won't be filled out again, so you'll need to remember it. Now, I don't prefer the Quick Connect, again, because if I'm setting up a site, it's because I intend to use it over and over. So I typically turn the Quick Connect bar off. I don't need it, I don't use it, but it's there if you, if you do. Now the status window at the very top will tell you what's happening with the files that you're doing, um, transfers that you've got going. It, it'll tell you what the status is. It'll also tell you if it's disconnecting. Now servers have timeout. If it, uh, if it needs to or if your settings are set that way, it'll timeout and disconnect to save resources. Okay, the local tree on the left and the remote tree on the right are basically one and the same. Uh, the only difference being, again, this is the local site, this is the remote site. Now, if you don't like the directory tree, you can, you can do without it. You simply have to navigate where you want and then click drag and drop. Now, I'm going to mark all the files, and if I were to drag them over and release them, they're going to copy them in the same way that they did before, but I'm doing it without the benefit of the tree. Now, I like the tree, but whatever works best for you. This will, dis as I mentioned earlier, will display what's happening down below. Now you can turn it on or off. It's not going to stop what's happening. It's only going to show you what's happening. In the event um, you've added a new file, you know, you, you went out to your Explorer, you added a new file manually, uh, it might not appear within FileZilla. Remember, it it took a, basically a snapshot of the files that you had present at the time you opened FileZilla. So if you've made a change outside of FileZilla, you may want to refresh the list. And it'll basically, whatever folder you're pointing to, see how it turns blue? Whatever folder you're pointing to, if you click refresh, it will refresh that folder. If you have a big transfer happening, and let, let's do this one more time. Let's um, Let's upload. So see how I have a transfer going. If I need to temporarily pause that, I can click this button to halt the transfer. Now, it's still queued. It's still in the list. And when I click this button, uh, I'm sorry, when I click this button again, it will continue the transfer where it left off. That's one of the features I really like about FileZilla. Okay, earlier I mentioned that it is possible to set up additional settings that control where you automatically start or begin when you connect to a site. Now I'm going to uh, show you that now. So open up your site in the Site Manager and locate the Advanced tab here. Now basically, if you prefer, you can always start with the local computer pointing to where it can find that site. And normally this is something I do uh, as a rule of thumb. I always want it to start in the folder where my local copy of that website is. I optionally can also tell it where to start the remote site. Now you remember that we started earlier at the root, which is above public HTML. 
So there were a number of other folders here. By putting slash public HTML here and connecting, you'll see that I'm automatically placed in the public HTML folder. Now let's let's review that. Let's let's close it down and do it again. And the reason I'm doing this is I want you to see that uh, here. I'll tell you what. Let's let's go way up here. So I'm in a completely different place. Let's open find biz, and you'll notice that I am beginning in public HTML. Now I can still see the folders up above by clicking on the folder above. You'll notice it was a question mark and now it's resolved. The reason is it hasn't looked beyond the, the folder name. So in order to determine what's in .cpanel, I would need to click into cPanel and now it's looked inside and it can see additional folders. So if you see a question mark here, it's because FileZilla has not looked beyond the list. So for example, if I want to drill down into the themes, I need to touch WP content and then click plus. Touch the themes and then click plus. Now I can see the content within the themes folder. Uh, and again, this is just helping conserve bandwidth. It's not going to preload everything in every folder unless you actually need it. Now once you do need it, click it. It'll display and any that are below it will also be question marked. If you need to see them, click them and go. There are some additional properties within the site manager. You can also determine whether or not it's going to use default method, active method, or passive method for the transfers. If your hosting provider has specified that passive is preferred, then you do need to click this radio button. I do recommend you leave it on default unless you've specifically been told to change it. Some hosting companies prefer it if you only use one simultaneous connection at a time. In other words, uh, let's say for example you have FileZilla open t in more than one tab uh, and you have two of them pointing to the same host for whatever reason. Uh, I've done it myself. For some hosting companies that violates their terms of service or is not considered a best practice. If you need to limit the number of times a, a single user is connected to the same host, click this and choose how many connections are the maximum. Now there are ways to limit or control how many uploads or downloads happen simultaneously. That's actually in a different place. We want to go to the settings area and and then within the transfers section choose how many simultaneous transfers can happen at once. Now that's up or down for example. Uh, so this is how many uh, maximum at the same time. So I've chosen six. That seems to be a pretty good mix for my host. Um, uh, two is too few, eight is too many, six does seem to work. I do occasionally run into some limits uh, and things start slowing down. In that case I will generally bring this down to four. Um, you can also enable or um, change the speed limits. So right now everything is measured in kilobytes per second. So if you need to, because of throttling uh, for example, if you need to limit how much uh, bandwidth you're using at any given time, you can enable the speed limits and then set them for both download and upload respectively. Now I, I didn't mention it but it should be obvious you can also limit how many are concurrent on the uploads for example and downloads. Now I might consider making it just one for the uploads because uploads are significantly slower than downloads. I might uh, leave downloads unlimited and let it go up to eight uh, simultaneous transfers uh, but I only want one on the upload because again I know it's going to really impact my overall performance. So FileZilla provides a lot of options and I, I don't really think it's within the scope of this video to cover in detail all of these but I will tell you that simultaneous connections and connection speed or timeout rather are a couple of those that I do uh, tend to adjust when I come in here. One final note would be in file editing. So for example, when you're in 
FileZilla, and you see a file on the remote side, it is possible to view slash edit that file. And that view slash edit is controlled by, uh, or what program is used, is controlled by that setting. So let me, let me re refresh you there. Oops, sorry, wrong place. Edit settings. Down at the bottom, file editing, file associations. So I'm inheriting the systems file associations. And in the event that none of those are found, uh, it will use those that are programmed here. So for example, I just chose a PHP file. So this custom file type association basically says, if you attempt to view a PHP file, I prefer you to use this program. Now, if you uh, had a, for example, a, an image file and you wanted to, when you, when you view edit it, if you wanted it to open in Photoshop, you could set that right here. You simply um, add a new line, determine which type of file it is that you want to use, and then provide the path to where the program you're using is located. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers uh, the main settings. I mentioned to you earlier that uh, keeping FileZilla's installation current is important. Uh, that's done right here with updates. So I do check for FileZilla updates at least once a week. Um, and then when I am checking, I'm only checking for stable versions. Uh, if you're a developer, you may want to uh, choose the beta, you know, if you want to help them out. But, you know, if you're just an, your average user, stable versions only. Okay, although the next item is best practices for organization, I think we've pretty much covered that. Is it, it is important that you come up with some type of organizational system so that you can find these. Again, if you're only going to manage one or two sites, it's not important. But if you're getting started on this, the chances are pretty good you're going to do more than one. Uh, when I first started out, I just had one client. Well, obviously, uh, that's changed, as you can see. Uh, and if I hadn't broken them down this way, I'd spend all my time looking for a site to connect to rather than actually doing the work I needed to do. Now, one final thing I, I, I didn't discuss previously and that I did show you but didn't really explain is a quick way to connect to a different server. So I can open the site manager here and it'll pull down a drop down. And from here, I can choose a site to go log into. So for example, I could go log into one of my client sites, Heavy Haul Trucking, just by clicking that and saying, open it in a new tab. Now, like most modern applications, uh, it will allow you to have multiple sites open at one time. Uh, and I can review these. I can copy and paste between my local and my remote and then flip over here and I'm, I'm still working in findbiz.com as well. So there are two ways to open it, or I guess technically three, if you consider the Quick Connect bar. There are three ways to open a site. The Quick Connect, where you type all the information in manually. The Site Manager, which you open with the icon, choose the site you want, and then click Connect. And finally, the drop-down method here, where you choose the file you want to open, and then click Go. Okay, that pretty much covers um, installing and using, from a, from a beginner standpoint, FileZilla FTP client. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If I can be of service, please let me know. Reach out and let me know if you need to see a video on something. Until next time, this is Sine signing out. Happy blogging.